Okay, uh, this is Sean Fennan. Uh, if you haven't seen one of these CTAKE sessions already, I'm just going to tell you uh, to put questions and comments in the chat. Jeff Miller will be acting as the moderator. He will collect them, uh, vet them, collate them, et cetera, and pose them later after our, uh, I'm done speaking. <clears throat> okay, so this is about advanced dictionary use in Apache CTIGs. Okay, so my original plan was to talk about the default Apache CTIGs dictionary lookup module, also called FAST dictionary lookup. However, <laughs> and this is actually a good thing, Several other presentations will go over both the defaults and customization of the fast lookup module. So uh, it's kind of silly for me to do the same thing, as of course, all of you are going to watch those other presentations. Uh, and in addition, CMAC just spoke quite a bit about it. So my new plan is to talk about a new case-sensitive dictionary lookup engine. Yeah, nobody knows it exists, right? It, it does. I checked it in last week. <laughs> so uh, there have been a lot of conversations both in the past and recently about problems with the uh, default dictionary lookup and how it makes all kinds of mistakes regarding uh, case, what should be uh, case sensitive words. So I had, when I created this new dictionary lookup, three main goals. One was to obviously add case sensitivity to term discovery. The next was to make customization of the runtime dictionary lookup easier. Uh, and I'll talk, try to explain that a little bit later. And the third is to make creation of the actual dictionary database more transparent to the user. Okay, so case sensitivity. The new database has three primary lookup tables, one with all uppercase terms. And as you might guess, this has lots of acronyms and abbreviations, uh, one with mixed case terms. And this has lots of brand name medications, um, not brand. And then a third lookup table with lowercase terms, just all lowercase. And this is kind of a catch all for um, everything in the clinical document. If the note is all uppercase, note text is all uppercase, then all three tables are used in order. Again, with mixed case, all three tables are used. Lowercase, all three tables are used. Now this sounds a little goofy, but I will try to explain why this is done later. Um, now, since all three tables are used, obviously something might be found in more than one table. So we have conflict resolution performed by a best match to a table. In other words, if something is in the uppercase, all uppercase table, an all lowercase table, what is it in the text? Is it all uppercase or is it all lowercase? Okay, so some examples. On the left is a, well, not clinical note, but basically a bunch of lines that I stole from a clinical note. I threw them in like this uh, because they fit my need of having uh, uppercase terms. So the First line with further with further seizure, spinal tap and culture, CSF. The one with capitalized CSF was from the original document. I copied the line lowercase CSF to see what it found. On the right, you can see what it found for each line. 
when CSF was capitalized, it did identify it as a term. When CSF was lowercase, it left it out. Now, one thing that happens uh, is a clinical document will be written by somebody who wants to yell. And so everything is in uppercase. Obviously, we need to test this. Without further seizure, spinal tap and culture, CSF. Seizure, spinal tap, and culture are all uppercase in, in uh, this sentence. They should be found, however, using the lowercase lookup table. As I spoke of previously, the lowercase lookup table is still used as kind of a catch-all, and it will allow the identification of all these terms, even though they are all in uppercase and not in the uppercase lookup table, by the way. So we move forward. Uh, denies STIs and abnormal PAPs. Now notice that STI S is mixed case. It does find it. You can see so on the right. If you have all lowercase, it does not. Uh, because hopefully no one is writing that all in lowercase. Same thing uh, for HIV, RPI, R. It finds them uppercase, does not find them lowercase. CBC, uppercase, not lowercase. EEG, uppercase, not lowercase. So as long as the clinical note appropriately has uh, acronyms or abbreviations in uppercase, they should be found if they are in the uppercase lookup table of the dictionary. Now, this is a, a example that has been brought up uh, as something that's obvious and obviously wrong in the previous dictionary lookup. There is a medication named today uh, and as you could guess, today as a word is all over various clinical documents. And we don't want uh, for every mention of the word today as a time, you know, right now to be identified as a medication. So today is actually mixed case in the UMLS uh, dictionary source. And so it is put in the mixed case table of the dictionary lookup for CTEX. As we can see in the first sentence, the patient is taking the medication today with a capitalized T. It is identifying today as a medication. The same thing in the lower case, the patient is taking the medication today. It does not identify it as a medication. Excellent. So many problems solved. However, today the patient is taking the medication. Aha, uh -huh. today is capitalized because it's at the beginning of a sentence. And the dictionary lookup incorrectly identifies it as a medication. But hey, I mean, what do you want? All right, so runtime customization. The default lookup requires parameters uh, for runtime performance to be set in two different places. One is a lookup parameter XML file that most people can never find. And the other is the user environment, or you know, as most people currently set it in Piper files. Okay, the new case sensitive lookup allows parameters to be set in one place, just a Piper file. Um, the XML file that is used by the default dictionary lookup is kind of verbose and requires you to, you know, self-descriptive as it is, uh, it has a lot of parameter names and values with tags, et cetera. The Piper file that performs the same function is not as verbose and I think easier to use for someone who is not a software developer. All right, so on the left, we can see an example of the XML file. On the right, the new Piper file. 
the XML file has a lot of tags with keys and values. You can see them in yellow and white and uh, white. Those are all just labels. And then, you know, the gray part, that's just some comments that I have in there. With this XML file, you can set 16 parameters for the dictionary lookup. On the right, this is a Piper file. Everything in gray is either a comment or the setting of a parameter that is not actually required because it has a default in the diction in the case sensitive di dictionary lookup. Everything that looks white right now is a setting for customization. Now here you can set not 16 parameters, but 25. It's a much more customizable dictionary lookup. All right, so here's some snippets from the XML file. Again, it's self-descriptive. However, it's kind of verbose. Uh, to name the dictionaries, you know, it requires four lines and specifying that you want a JDBC dictionary, you know, you've got this really long reference to a Java class. On the right, we have the configuration pilot file. You just said the dictionaries and a name and a type. On the left, again, we have concept factories. Um, that's what you actually use to say, I want an Rx norm value to be put into my concept so I can re uh, reference it later. You have the left and you have the right, which is what is in the Piper file. It's a little more brief. The consumer, this uh, is what, again, a lot of people don't even know it exists. The current default uh, dictionary lookup, you can have it uh, provide you with everything that's in the document, even if they have op overlapping spans. For instance, uh, if the document has breast cancer, then CTAKES will give you one concept of breast cancer, and then in the same span, the concept of cancer, even though they're, you know, the same thing. There is a way to set CTAKES to use con uh, subsumption. In the default dictionary, that's kind of goofy. Again, you have to do it in this XML file that nobody even knows exists and you have to point to a CTAX class. Uh, in the new one, you just set a parameter. And the last snippet I'm going to show you, uh, this is actually set by an environment uh, setting in the default dictionary lookup, and it is called exclusion tags. Now, uh, it was mentioned in another presentation that the dictionary lookup will use parts of speech to validate uh, terms that it tags as uh, concepts in the clinical document. Now, this exclusion tags has a list of um, pen tree bank part of speech abbreviations. And unless you look up the pen tree bank and see what the list is and actually understand uh, syntax, then this might not be too easy for you to deal with if you want to change things. On the right, the new one, you just say look up verbs, look up nouns, look up adjectives, adverbs, yes or no. Uh, if you want something that is not one of those parts of speech, then you can specify the pen tree bank um, abbreviation, a list of them in other lookups. Dictionary creation. Okay. Um, the, the default dictionary lookup creator GUI is a little confusing. The GUI panels list UMLS codes for uh, TUIs and different source vocabularies without any definition of what they really are. So if you're not familiar with the UMLS and semantic types, this is really kind of uh, confusing. 
In addition, it has lots of internal logic that is not documented. It does a lot of uh, finesse, shall we say, with what it actually reads in from the UMLS database and what it um, actually stores into the CTAPES database. The case-sensitive lookup dictionary creator uh, is an update to this. It looks extremely similar, but uh, the GUI panels list not only these UMLS um, obfuscated codes, but also their definitions. It doesn't have as much secret internal logic. Uh, instead, it relies a lot more on what the user selects in the GUI. All right, so here are a few screenshots. <clears throat> Uh, the first thing you do at the very top is uh, select your CTAX installation directory, then your UMLS installation directory. Now, everything in the table below, um, these are UMLS vocabulary abbreviations. And then next to them, their actual names their versions, and the number of CUIs that exist in each of them. In the previous dictionary creator, it was just that column that says code. So unless you look up all of those things individually, this is a little difficult to make. You enter your dictionary name and then, you know, move on to the next tab, which is on the right. And this is semantic types. Uh, the TUI, which is a code for a semantic type, then the actual name. That's easy to understand. Then the semantic group for that. For instance, acquired abnormality is a disorder. Anatomical structure is a net. The antibiotic is a drug. The previous creator just had the column that says TUI. And again, unless you looked it all up, uh, you were kind of in the dark. Text types. This is new. It was not available in the default dictionary creator. Um, and this is part of what replaces all of the secret internal logic that the original creator had. It kind of chose these for you and did some finesse, performed some you know, modification on the way that uh, synonyms were stored in the database without letting you know. This allows you to more intelligently choose what you want to put into the dictionary database. It gives you the uh, acronym under the TTY. You could look that up if you want a lot more information, but to the right, it does tell you the text type. In other words, uh, you know, acronym, drug product, uh, generic drug name. These should be fairly useful and self-explanatory. The last tab is just language. Uh, these are parsed out of your, like everything else in the previous tabs, these are parsed out of your uh, currently installed UMLS database. When I installed mine, I just had it uh, bring in English and, and Spanish. You can also have it bring in Italian, uh, German, Swiss, I think, et cetera. And then those would be listed here. I should probably write the name so that people know what ENG and SPA actually mean. But I'll get to it. Here we go. Contact some more info. Write questions either in this chat window, and I'll try to address them now, or to the dev uh, dev list or user list, um, go to our website. And definitely, um, if you have questions, the fastest way to get an answer might be to go to the CTAPES wiki and see if anything is on there that can already help you. OK. Back to the Q&A. If you have any questions, please type it in the chat.
Yes, I realized that was a lot of brand new information uh, presented in a pretty short span of time. Sean, can, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Sean. This, is, this is Jeff. Um, I have a question while we're waiting for you to type. Um, for the, uh, the, the XML versus the Piper file, um, where, where there was a slide where you had the, uh, you were comparing the Piper file to the uh, XML file that's generated for each dictionary that's created. Right. Um, were you, uh, were you saying that, um, uh, the, were, were you referring to a, a separate XML file on the previous slide or was that always that file? Uh, Maybe if you could go, if you're able to go back in the slides. Right, sure. Let's see. Okay. Can you see what I'm yep. showing? Yep. Okay, are you referring to this XML on the left? Yeah, that that's the that's is yeah that is not the XML file generated by is or is it I can't I can't see that text. Yeah, it actually is. Um, okay. Yes. Yes. I think the one thing that I did change is if you can see at the very bottom that long string of white, that's the class specification for. <clears throat> Uh, what subs what performs subsumption? Okay, so I guess what you're so what you were saying is that for example, right now I believe exclusion tags you can't set that in the default XML file. You can only set it in the Piper file, as far as I understand. And you're saying that you kind of followed that forward for new configuration items as well for the new one. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. and I, as you can see here, I tried to really simplify it for people that aren't. Um, familiar with uh, the jargon, shall we say. Does anyone else have questions? I'm kind of surprised by the silence. <laughs> this is a... a Big change. And oh, by change, I do not mean that this is the default. This is an optional uh, dictionary lookup. I have another question I'll ask. Sure. Um, speed wise, is this compare is this similar in speed to the to the default? I mean, I imagine it's I imagine it's a little bit slower. It's actually uh, from what I've tested, it's not any slower and Part of the reason is, I think, that uh, even though things are split into three tables, there isn't much overlap between the tables. OK. There's a question about where the code is currently. Uh, the code is in trunk. I do want to release it with CTEX5. Um, but again, it will not be the default lookup. However, I think it is a very useful option to have around. So if you're familiar with the, everyone out there, if you're familiar with the CTEX uh, Subversion or SVN repository, you can find it there. It's part of the uh, CTEX Dictionary Lookup Fast module. I did not give it its own module um, for various reasons that I'm not going to get into now. but. If you are not familiar with how to uh, reach the SVN repository, go to ctakes.apache.org and there is a downloads page and the link to that repository is in the lower right, I believe. Uh, there's a request if you could post the, if you could post this on the user and dev list, the code, the path to the code. Yes, I can do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would like to, uh, when we move into, say, putting together a release candidate for CTEX5, I want to, you know, put together a list of all of the new things uh, that not only be, need to be publicized for CTEX5, but also need to be uh, tested, documented, what have you.
there's a comment that we should probably have a module for doing NER evals and some standard data sets that's easy for people to test out new innovations like this uh, from Timothy Miller. Yes, we definitely should. We have, um, in fact, I think what we could do is put something in examples uh, and use the example notes that exist in CTEX. So I, when this comes out, you it will, is, is it, would it be possible to use the new GUI to create an old dictionary or are they gonna be separate? They're separate and the old GUI still exists. Like I said, I've, I've not done a full you know, replacement. Uh, this is just a new option. Are there any other comments or questions? I know just from the comments that I see on the message board that this should come in handy. Um, but yeah, I hope so. I mean, you're correct. There's been a lot of discussion on uh, case sensitivity and problems with the current dictionary. I know that you've been uh, pretty active in those discussions. Um, so th there was really a lot of impetus for me to do this and get it done sooner rather than later. Yeah, I think the um, the more trans the GUI with more transparency um, is great. Uh, a couple more questions here concerning source control. Do we have plans to switch to GitHub? All right, uh, that's a really good question. Um, Apache does have a mirror, a GitHub repository that is a mirror of the Subversion repository. However. Um, Updating has not been very frequent for one reason or another. And the biggest problem that we have with the GitHub um, kind of uh, standard mode of operation is that GitHub really wants you to put in text uh, because you know, as you can imagine, it makes modification easier. It only has to keep track of the modifications, not an entirely new file. So there is a size limit on files that are binary. Our machine learning trained model files are by and large binary. And a good number of them are in size. They are past the limit of what GitHub allows. So uh, We've had a lot of problems trying to get them in and, and when there's a change, trying to get the change in and approved. However, what I think would be nice is if we had we kept the models on subversion uh, and we could somehow put the rest of the code on a GitHub mirror. And you could either, you know, use GitHub and then check out the models on subversion, or and this is you know the more useful thing, uh, you could, you know, check out C tags on GitHub and then, or the code. And then when you build it, Maven is going to bring down those models for you anyhow. Someone's suggesting one of the Git large file system for large models. Um, yeah. There are, I guess there are, there are ways of um, pointing to other storage for larger files, oh, one of the one of the if if we switch to Git, will it uh, GitHub will we would, do, would that replace the the email with um, issues or some or would we still have the same um, dev user and oh uh, yeah I see what you're saying if that's a good question I mean we would still have the dev and user lists uh, we would still have bug tracking through uh, whatever we use right now, I can't remember. But I don't know if we would have to set up the GitHub repo to either forward bugs and comments or turn them off completely. I'm not a GitHub expert. There's a suggestion to use the I2B2 or N2C2 for medication, medication, um, I'm not, I'm not pathology, NER, um, is that pathology? I've seen several tools measure their F scores over those data sets. I think this is in reference to, um, perhaps this is in reference to uh, 
doing some NER evals on standard data, set, data sets. Right. Uh, actually, we have done evals using Sharp and Share data sets, uh, which come from challenges. I2B2, um, I don't think we've actually used anything for um, comparison or testing. However, I should state that I2B2 for a bunch of the projects, they actually use CTAGs and the CTAGs dictionary lookup. So, you know, they must trust it a little bit. Uh, yes. Uh, Peter says that Yuma, Yuma moved almost to completely to GitHub, but Jira and mailing list are the same. Uh, Gorgana, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Um, yes, we have a number of gold annotation data sets that we use, um, semi-val share, semi-val, and clinical temp eval. Um, yeah. I've noticed uh, one of the reasons I had asked about the, the forums is because I sometimes have difficulty searching them or sharing sharing things the way that I would like them to be to, to sort of be visualized to other users. And I was wondering if a, a switch to GitHub would, um, or, or maybe another system would, would help other folks as well. People, people are sometimes they, they post links to it, things thinking that it's being rendered, but it's not. Right. Yeah, actually, I feel your pain searching uh, the dev list or for things that have been mentioned in the dev list is not only painful, but once you do find a thread, it can be extremely hard to read. Um, it would be nice to have something like, uh, you know, the GitHub paradigm of, you know, throwing everything into a little box in a GUI on the web. We're going to ask, what is the Apache Software Foundation policy on switching to GitHub? I don't know. Uh, I've honestly, I've always been happy with Subversion and our current, you know, primary repository. So I haven't looked into this at all. Um, but I believe that this is a question that anyone could write to. Um, uh, forget what they're called. Uh, basically, Apache infrastructure, and you know pose the question, write some comments, uh, state, you know, your affiliation with CTAKES, what have you. And, uh, you know, I think anyone could research this. Peter says that only the source moved there. Many Apache Software Foundation projects moved their main code development to GitHub. Ah, okay. And this is in reference to uh, Yuma, Yuma Fit, and Ruta, and uh, bug tracking, correct? I, P Peter, his follow-up comment said that it, so it's okay and officially supported by Apache. That's what Peter's uh, statement was. Right. Peter Klugel. And Peter uh, Abramowitz, pull requests on GitHub would be nice for peer review. Uh, or and he asked if whether Subversion has a similar process. Uh, yeah, I don't know of a way to do it on Subversion. What I've always done is go to the, uh, you know, if someone posts something in, and I can't remember what our bug tracker is right now, uh, you know, I've, I've ended up downloading it and then, you know, manually going through the steps of putting it in there. Branches and pull requests and everything else that GitHub and you know underlying it Git can do for you, they really are great. I do use GitHub and Git on other projects, and I I do enjoy it. I just don't know what capabilities we would you know pull in from GitHub. I don't know. I'm I'm actually friends with one of the managers of GitHub. I could could always see if I could pull strings, but are there any other questions? Okay. 
Well, I think this is the last CTEX presentation of the day. Um, I am certainly willing to stay on the line uh, and answer questions until they are no longer asked. Sean, there's a, this is a question that I have again. It's kind of going back to the first question I had since no one else is asking this a little bit off topic, but um, there is another XML file that that is sometimes used to set settings for, for annotation engines, correct? Um, like the abstract. Oh, yes. It's the, a larger the, file. Hmm? It's Sorry. Like, Sorry, go ahead. Are you talking about the descriptor files that uh, are at a higher level used to set up the pipeline itself and all of the annotators that are within the pipeline? I, th I, I think there's an XML file that describes like some of the default settings. Um, for example, the default settings right now, wherever, this, wherever the default setting right now is that says what the exclusion tags are, I feel like that is in another XML file. Right, that, that is in a descriptor file, okay. which um, are kind of, they're in old, I'm, I'm going to say older, I think they're still a standard for some people, but um, they're an older method of setting up pipelines for CTAs and I, never really liked them because I can't stand trying to find things in a series of XML files and then, you know, trying to run through and make sure all my parameters are set and the formatting hasn't, you know, messed up anything, et cetera. Uh, so I am a convert. I use Piper files now, which pretty much completely replace the descriptor files. Um, and they're, you know, I think you can still see it on the screen, what is on the right. Mm, yeah. And there, there is a page on the CTAGS wiki about Piper files. Uh, there are actually newer capabilities in Pipers now. Um, you can add various views um, and a couple other things, I, I think. but. So there will have to be a new wiki entry for CTEX 5. Great. Well, that seems like it um, for questions, at least for this session. Thank you, Sean. Uh, well, thank you for moderating. Yeah, there is one more question um, about if the slides will be available after the uh, presentation. Yes. So I am going to put the slides on the CTEX website. Uh, I don't think the slides themselves will be available through Apache or ApacheCon. The presentations, as they have been recorded, are supposed to be available. And I think there will be YouTube versions, so uh, that should be easy to find. But I will put the actual PowerPoint slides uh, on the, on the CTAKES website. Okay. All right, thank you. All right. Thank all the attendees. Uh, it's really good to have questions and comments and uh, useful discussion, especially this GitHub stuff. I have learned a lot. Okay, bye all.